அழித்திடவும் அறிக்கிடவும் இரட்டிடவும் நீயால் வாய் there is an incredible unity that has occurred within this fellowship and it is a unity that i don't think we would have realized we had were it not for all the transpired in these last several months building this mosque and now today officially opening it alhamdulillah may we thank god that he exists within our hearts and may we thank that beautiful teacher baba mahayadeen who has worked so tirelessly to bring us to this place where we could recognize that oneness of god within us all madri naam seyyapadugindra ovvoru kaaranangalaiyum konde inda unity undaakkuru everything we do in the world the purpose is to establish unity to cut away hostility and enmity naam samadhanam cut away evil qualities cut away division and to establish peace and unity that is the purpose kaaranangalaiyum through the through this medium konde namma pirugalai adakka oru vali how we can cut away our divisions of differences cut away the battle and bring about peace. this is one way to cut away difference this is one way to cut away our sins and our evil actions this is the reason for prayer and the place where we pray in order to bring this unity is islam during my meditation i observed or duniya muluvadum irutta irukku the entire world appeared dark to it le irukkarargal i raise my hands towards god and i appeal oh god these people are in the state of darkness and they are conducting their lives like this solli naan aandavana pugalugiren then at that at that moment i i saw the rasool and with the rasool myself and i think ajwad were trying to organize a mosque she said this holy man is coming from sri lanka and um you know he's going to come over here to see us so i got his address actually and wrote him a letter one of the things that was sort of key note with me is i was so discontent and i told him i said when i'm up i want to be down when i'm down i want to be up when i'm married i want to be single when i'm single i want to be married it's like whatever state i'm in it seems like the opposite state state is what i really want he said that if i cannot find the truth within myself traveling around the world would be of no use he said that you need to find yourself a true guru so i said oh, okay i got to go to india now <laughs> i went there in 1974 from april 1974 to april 1975 so i was there for a year and during that time they did they did build the mosque in mock um the mockum bomb which the mockum bomb is like a little island uh, off you know off the um sri lanka um the southern tip of sri lanka sri lanka it was a beautiful place a beautiful island the sand was beautiful the ocean was beautiful and baba built this house and we were there to help him build a rest house for travelers on the path well i was 26 years old living on the west coast in Oregon so a friend of who was living with me um invited me to go on a trip and she showed me a picture of Bob and uh she said there's a wise man who lives in Philadelphia and he uh answers people's questions he cooks for us and we just um spend time with him every day all day and so i came to philadelphia and i knew that i was in the presence of a very exalted being and i didn't know how i should respond or how he should act mm-hmm. at that time the house was full of people and bow was having um question and answer sessions and discoursing and it was quite a different scene and uh so i came every day i uh witnessed the extraordinary 
presence of Bawa and the diversity of people here and his ability to look into the hearts of people and answer their questions. He said, come here every day and learn wisdom. And alhamdulillah, I've been here for 34 years and I've never gone back to that way of life. Well, I was born and raised in uh, Iowa, went to college in Iowa, and became a Lutheran pastor with education here in Mount Airy in Philadelphia for three years. Spent a lot of time on the streets in people's houses and I was so overwhelmed with poverty and the concerns people had, the suffering that I saw, injustices that I saw, that over a period of about four years I really lost my faith in God. And eventually I left the ministry. I heard about Bob Mohyadeen through Mitch Gilbert who was the president, one of the presidents of the fellowship. And uh, I was living in North Philadelphia at the time and we were, I was so overwhelmed with the WDS presentations, Mitch Gilbert would come on for four minutes of straight wisdom eight times a day. And whenever he came on, we were all in awe because he was giving us truth like we'd never heard it before. Each of us is responsible for tuning our own instrument and we can't tune our instruments by listening to the tunes someone else is playing. Chances are the other guy also was hitting sour notes. Each of us has to listen for that perfect pitch that life itself provides. This is Mitch Gilbert saying truth is the only lasting joy. But here was a voice out of the wilderness talking about truth like I had never heard it before. And I was mesmerized. My heart was opened up to accept the understanding of God and His presence. And then when I saw Bawa do some of the miracles that I had been preaching about that Jesus did, I was really, really moved. It became clear that this God's house was going to be built directly in the backyard of the main fellowship in Philadelphia. In 19... Uh... 83, uh, about mid-November, we broke ground. We um, uh, moved in with the, the backhoes and, and uh, removed the, the beautiful garden that was there and started on our journey. When we first started laying out the mosque, uh, we were under uh, a lot of constraints with regard to the area we were able to occupy on the lot. I remember Bawa coming out that first day, and uh, he wasn't feeling well, but he was able to be wheeled around in a wheelchair. The voice was working well, and his orders were coming uh, quick and sharp, and, and he set the tone for this project, that there, there, this was going to be done uh, swiftly. And it turned out that the numbers that Bawa had given us were exactly within a couple inches of what we were allowed. We were within a couple inches of all our setback lines and of the maximum allowable usable space at that time. And this was the first inkling that we all had that there is something going on here other than we know and that we just better move along and do our job and, and there was absolutely no doubt at who was running the show. And he was so careful, sat in the window every day, directed it, and kept complete tabs and designed it himself and so on and so forth, uh, kept close watching how much it was costing, what the materials were, and, and supervised every last atom of the building of the mosque, which he said really had been designated by Allah Ta'ala uh, from the very beginning, that a uh, very special mosque would be built on this place. This was the first mosque that was built as a building by itself as a mosque in Pennsylvania. Abba really started out in very basic things which would save people uh, from punishment and hellfire. Uh, the first thing, uh, the first of the maqamat is really uh, called adab, which means to establish good behavior and qualities. And that was the first thing he concentrated on. Then, the, the, in working on the qualities, he gradually introduced bit by bit pieces of Quran, salawat, duas, and things like that. The whole idea was to make people into Muslims and have them follow the deen of Allah, uh, deen al-Islam, and uh, which was the final accumulation and culmination of all of the messages of the prophets and the work of the Ali of the saints. Remember always Baba's name is, is Muhyiddin, which 
It really means the reviver of the deen, reviver of deen al-Islam. So he was reviving it within our hearts. So it was quite remarkable to see all of the uh, Baha'is children, as, as we call ourselves, you know, doing this uh, work like ants, everybody working together, uh, and the harmony uh, and the, uh, you know, the fact of everyone just doing whatever they were able to do, uh, you know, with, you know with, that, with that love. My brother. Jeweled lights of my, jeweled light of my eyes. There's a heart within the body, and that makes us, that moves within us, that makes us moves. And then it's the same. The the, the, the mosque is the the heart of the fellowship. It moves within us. So the mosque is very important. Very important. <coughs> a man, the, the heart of a man is very important. And to the life of a man, prayer in the mosque is important. We shouldn't have a mosque so we can fight with others. We do this to reach God, to be in unity with each other. Amazingly, the things came together. People started coming around the clock and we finished on the 27th and we had the dedication. And it was a wonderful day. Just a wonderful day. It was a day that our hearts had worked for. We had put all our trust in our Sheikh and we had done what he had said to do. And this was the reward. And the mosque came in the twelfth year of the fellowship itself. And it was, to me, I, it was like a gift. In the twelfth year, the disciple is supposed to be realized, to attain a certain state. And in the twelfth year, the mosque came. This was Bala's gift for us. And I thought about it in some of the discourses that he had given. And, and I thought about the work that we had all done together and I realized that this was the easy work. The physical work of building this mosque really was the easy work. The difficult work was the work that Bala did. The work of bringing us along, of leading us to this place. If he had told us this is what he was going to do 12 years ago, many of us might not have stayed. But he brought us to this place like the children, like teaching in school, how you teach a child the alphabet, and you teach a child how, how to read numbers. It's really to prepare him to exist in the world, to survive in the world. But you can't tell your child that when you're teaching him, you need this to survive. You just teach him. You try to make it as painless and, 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 and a good experience. And this is what Bawa did. This is what he did for us. And the zikr has been going on for the last 30 years. Every morning we've been doing, been doing zikr. And every mo five times a day the prayers have been done. And Alhamdulillah, it is, this, I think, this, I believe, this, this, this holy ground, this mosque, whether people believe it or not, it doesn't really matter, it's not important, but they should believe, has been a, a, a beacon of light, a, a great symbol of blessing for the entire Philadelphia, pro most likely, most likely, most likely, I'm certain, for the entire uni United States, and more than that, for the entire world. It is, we do not see it probably is shining so bright when the angels look at it. But we can't see, but I'm sure it is very powerful. Uh, have a, lot of, a lot of symbolism of grace and blessing. It is for this reason that we are doing this, this work here to bring all together, all different people together, to show that we are all one. As the tribe of Abraham, Abraham he become one as the ones of faith. And then, although there are many different races or tribes, 
if we can cut away these differences <laughs> then we come <laughs> into a state of unity <laughs> as the followers of Muhammad then we believe <laughs> that we are one family <laughs> who worship only <laughs> one God and we realize the truth <laughs> and there is the unity <laughs> where we share our food <laughs> so this, is, this group that you see here is God's funny family You know, he told us all when, when he, you know, when he left his body, he wasn't leaving. He, he would be inside of us. It's like, and the, the cartoon exists inside of us. That's, that's the reality. I said, I thought you had left us. He said, it could have happened like that. The ship has not yet come in. I didn't know what he meant. And I said, our ship or Bawa's to the translator. I always said, I am the ship. For the rest of your life, until your last breath, do your duty to the fellowship. Do duty until you draw your last breath. Protect my Pali, which means temple or mosque, and my words until your last breath. Even then, provide for this before you leave. You must do this. By now, with tears streaming down my face, I am going, I know, I will, I will. Baba said, I will not leave you. I will be with you here, helping you. Then he paused and said, Kelly, Carl, Michael. Then he paused. And then he said, some pray in the mosque, some do not, but they do their duty well. I accept them all. Some will drift away. Do not reprimand them. I don't. Make sure the mosque progresses when I am not here. This mosque is not just a building of two stories. The eight heavens are in this mosque. This mosque was being fashioned long before I came to this country. Even before I arrived here, it was in the making. It was built with their hands, no doubt. It was built with the hands of the children. Their prayers and their house was built by their own hands. And it is the house that they built here that will be the house they will be given in heaven. No one else could have built a mosque to look like this. No one else could have completed this. It is beyond the seventh heaven and the eighth heaven, the gem-studded heaven. It has been adorned by the angels. It has been adorned gradually over the years. It is still under construction. There are buildings and towers. It is such a mysterious wonder that each one is doing for himself or herself. <laughs>